Hey, my name's Dave Nicholson. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, this channel is all about my investment journey. I'm currently building a portfolio for my two daughters. We've got Georgia, who's 22. We've just bought two properties last year, and you can see how that all panned out on this channel. And we're building a portfolio for my little baby, Amelie, who is two. And I want to invite you along on that journey with us. We make daily content about everything that's happening in the property market. We share our own experiences and my own uh, vast knowledge of 23 years in the property industry. So take that finger of power, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on all the new content. Now, I wanna to talk to you first time buyers today because it is an uncertain time and maybe you've been saving a deposit for a property for a number of years. And right now you're sitting there thinking, you know what, I'm gonna wait till the market crashes because every news article is saying, House prices are going to crash 30%, 40%. There's people in the comments on this channel that say the market is guaranteed to crash 50%. Now, here's the thing. Nobody knows for certain if that's going to happen or not. I can't tell you that houses are going to go down. You can't tell me that they're not going to go down. It's just something that we don't know. Now, certain things that influence prices are things like inflation. So I know unless you've lived under a rock, that you've heard that inflation is absolutely crazy. You've probably seen it yourself when you get your gas or electric bill or you go shopping in Sainsbury's, right? The prices have gone through the roof. In fact, official figures say inflation is at 11.1%, just dropped to 10%. But more realistically, depending on what you do, really depends how that inflation hits you. If you're a taxi driver, for example, with the fuel costs going up, you've probably been hit way more than 11% by this inflation. Now, what the Bank of England does to reduce inflation is they rise the interest rates. That means that the mortgage payments that you pay are going to be more expensive each month, which means your affordability on a property is going to be considerably lower. So here's the thing. No one can time the market. It's just not possible to time the property market. You can never be certain when we're at the bottom. You can never be certain that there is going to be a crash because we would have expected that in the pandemic. It just made sense that the property prices should go down considerably and they didn't. They did the opposite and they went up. Now, house prices have been going down for the last four consecutive months and that is likely to continue for the next few months. However, when you're looking for a property, you can give a cheeky offer because there are going to be people in the market right now that will sell 15% below asking price because they need to sell for some reason. Maybe it's a probate property. Maybe somebody passed away and they just want the cash out of that deal. Maybe they're getting divorced and they need to split the assets to go and move on with their life. And that means that they will take a lower price as well. So there are people that do that. However, if I was a first time buyer at the moment, I would do these things. So with new builds, which is where a lot of first time buyers get uh, interested in, I wouldn't be interested in new builds. So the reason for that is that new builds have a premium on them. So when you buy a, a new build, generally for the first few years, the price is going to be less than what you paid in whatever market you're buying in. And that's a premium that a new build property has. Think about a car. When you buy a car, the second you drive it off the forecourt, even if you just put one mile on it, it's going to be worth less than 10 to 20 percent lower than what you initially paid for it. And that's the problem with new builds. So if you buy a new build and the market goes down, that's where you're going to find it difficult. So I like to buy older properties and I would advise anyone to buy older houses or flats, right? Because they've already had their depreciation. They've already had some time in the market. So that's a real consideration when you're looking for properties, to look for older properties. Now, can you time the market? We just said you can't time the market. But the interest rates are currently sitting at a base rate of 3.5%. And that's going to go up. That is going to go up probably to 4.5% over the next year. Now, here's the thing. 
If you wait, then your mortgage payments are going to be more expensive. So if you wait and buy a property, that's the issue that you've got, is that it's going to get more expensive as time goes on. So that's a consideration here. Uh, and so maybe the property is a little bit more expensive, as in the, the, the value of the house, but the payments, the monthly payments could be lower by buying a little bit sooner. So that's one thing that you would consider. And obviously you wanna go and check out with your estate agents and your mortgage broker, all of this kind of stuff. Now, another thing is that there's a good scheme at the moment, and that's called the Mortgage Guarantee Scheme, right? So that's a new scheme at the moment, or it's been out for a while. Um, and that means that the government will kind of insure the deal for the bank. And that means that they're more likely to lend. So when that ends, so this has just been extended to the end of 2023. We're in January now, but remember it can take six months to buy a house. So what this scheme means is that you just need to give a 5% deposit on the purchase that you have, which is great. But the bank is gonna be a little less like strict on their lending criteria. Now that's good for you because it can be hard to borrow big chunks of money, especially when you're a first time buyer. So the bank is going to say, look, we're not going to, uh, well, in the future, they're going to be a lot more strict on this. So what happens right now is you can give a 5% deposit. So if you buy a hundred grand house, you'll put a £5,000 deposit down, which is great. But then what will happen is that the, back, the, the, the sorry, the government will guarantee the, the, the money. So if you defaulted, you didn't pay, or you had to get evicted, then the government would pay the bank back. So there's no risk for that lender. So that means they're more likely to lend to people. Now, when that goes and the risk is on the bank, suddenly that it means that lending is gonna get more difficult. So that's a consideration. And if you can get in the property with 5% deposit, that's a good thing. Now, property prices always go up. They're gonna go down properly, uh, potentially in the short term, but in the longer term, they will go up. And when you're looking to buy a property, you should be looking to buy and hold. So if you're a first time buyer and you're thinking, you know what, I'm gonna buy a property, but I'm only gonna hold it for a year, maybe it's not the right time to buy. But if you're looking to buy a property and you're saying, you know what, I'm going to buy this property and I'm going to hold it for 10 years, five years, then this could be a great time to buy for you. One other thing that's really important here is stamp duty has been reduced. So the stamp duty threshold for first time buyers has moved as well. So that's going to be a massive chunk of change that you can save. So all of these things that the government's put in place, the stamp duty being discounted temporarily for you guys, the mortgage guarantee scheme, they're doing that because they want to keep the property market moving. Inquiries from first time buyers dropped significantly, which is why the other day they just started this. This happened a few months ago, but this all contributes to the fact that the government need people to buy properties because they make a huge sum of money. My friends that buy houses, when they buy a house, the tax that they pay on stamp duty and all of these things is considerably more than they do in their income. And so that means the government need to keep people moving. They need to keep people buying because that is what's filling up their coffers so they can pay for the NHS and all the other stuff that they need to keep the country going. So is now a good time to buy? Depends. It depends on your scenario. If you want to make sure your monthly payments are lower, there's a good chance that if you buy at the earlier part of 2023, that the payments will stay lower than if you buy at the back end of the year. This mortgage guarantee scheme means that you can have a 5% deposit, which is really, really important. And the stamp duty is reduced at the moment. So there's lots of positive things in there. And the other thing is that the market has dropped a little bit and there are people that will sell quickly that want to get a good price and they want to reduce that price just to get that property sold. So that's another consideration. So do let me know what you think in the comments or any questions you've got, do post them there. Do subscribe to this channel, guys. We've got new property content 
every single day. So subscribe, hit the bell, give me a like on the video as well. Check out all the other content, including this video right here. And last thing, I'm gonna pin a comment below this video. I'm gonna be providing some property training. I wanna invite you guys along on that property training. Come and join me and learn how to get below market value deals, learn all the property investing strategies that are gonna work in 2023. So click on the link, register, and I'll see you guys on the training. Bye for now.